Hello and welcome to Music, Love, Books and the Moon. I am Altea Caso and in today's episode I'm going to talk about depression. Depression is the leading cause of disability in the world. In the United States, close to 10% of adults struggle with depression. But because it's a mental illness, it can be a lot harder to understand than just, say, high cholesterol. One major source of confusion is the difference between having depression and just feeling depressed. Almost everyone feels down from time to time. Getting a bad grade, losing a job, having an argument, even a rainy day can bring on feelings of sadness. Sometimes there's no trigger at all. It just pops out of the blue. Then things change and those sad feelings disappear. But clinical depression is different. It's a medical disorder and it won't go away just because you want it to. It lingers at least two weeks and interferes with one's ability to work, play or love. Depression can have a lot of different symptoms. A low mood, loss of interest in things you'd normally enjoy, changes in appetite, feeling worthless or guilty, sleeping either too much or too little, poor concentration, loss of energy or recurrent thoughts of suicide. If you have at least five of those symptoms, you qualify for a diagnosis of depression. Depression has physical manifestations inside the brain. First of all, there are changes that could be seen with the naked eye. This includes smaller frontal lobes and hippocampal volumes. But neuroscientists still don't have a complete picture of what causes depression. It seems to have to do with the complex interaction between genes and environment but we don't have a diagnostic tool that can predict where or when it will show up. And because depression symptoms are intangible, it's hard to know who might look fine, but it's actually struggling. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, it takes the average person suffering with mental illness over 10 years to ask for help but there are many effective treatments. Medications and therapy complement each other to boost brain chemicals. In extreme cases, electroconvulsive therapy, which is like a controlled seizure in the patient's brain, is also very helpful. Other promising treatments, like transcranial magnetic stimulation, are being investigated too. So if you know someone struggling with depression, encourage them gently to seek out some of these options. You might even offer to help with specific tasks, like looking up therapists in the area or making a list of questions to ask a doctor. To someone with depression, these first steps can seem insurmountable. If they feel guilty or ashamed, point out that depression is a medical condition, just like asthma. It's not a weakness or a personality trait, and they shouldn't expect themselves to just get over it, any more than they could will themselves to get over a broken arm. If you haven't experienced depression yourself, avoid comparing it to times you have felt down. Comparing what they are experiencing to normal, temporary feelings of sadness can make them feel guilty for struggling. Even just talking about depression openly can help. For example, research shows that asking someone about their thoughts actually reduces their suicide risk. Open conversations about mental illness help erode stigma and make it easier for people to ask for help. And the more patients seek treatment, the more scientists will learn about depression and the better the treatments will get.
Thank you for listening and please don't forget to take care of yourself and love with all your heart.